wonder hussy here just hanging out in the beautiful springtime california mountains i'm in southern california about halfway between the san gabriel mountains and the san bernardino mountains at the cajon pass which is where interstate 15 which you can probably see way back there in the background that's where interstate 15 comes through from the high desert down into the la basin and you can see for yourself how many big rigs are busily hauling crap from the port at Long Beach to Vegas and points eastward. Thanks a lot, Bezos. But man in his infinite wisdom was moving goods back and forth between the desert and the coast way before the automobile was even a thing. Back in the 1880s, the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railroad started hauling stuff over these mountains. That's right, the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe was the first railroad to lay a line through the Cajon Pass back in 1885. And let me tell you something, it couldn't have been easy. I mean, if you watched the video I made at Donner Summit, up in the Sierras near Lake Tahoe, where those Chinese railroad workers had to blast those tunnels through the sheer granite cliff faces. Well, laying a track through Cajon Pass wasn't that hard, but it still wasn't easy because this is a pretty steep mountain pass. Remember, you're coming from the high desert, which, gosh, I think Hesperia Victorville, which is the first area you come into east of these mountains, it's like 4,000 feet. And you're coming all the way down to sea level in Los Angeles, so, you know, that's a 4,000 foot descent. And I guess at times it's a pretty steep grade. Um, from what I was reading online, it's up to a 3% grade on the rail line. I mean, you know how heavy these rail cars are and you see these railroads that are like, you know, 30, 40, 50, I feel like even maybe up to like a hundred cars long. That's a ton of weight to be going down 3%. And as if the grade isn't tricky enough, it's also really busy going through this pass. Somewhere between 75 and 100 freight and passenger trains go through Cajon Pass every single day. 75 to 100 trains a day, 3% grade. Can you say rail buffs fantasy? Okay, you know those rail buffs, they call them train spotters, guys that love standing outside of railroad tracks with cameras and telephoto lenses to take pictures of the trains as they go by. Sure, it could be easy to laugh at those guys, but I think it's a nice, clean, safe hobby that gets you out in the fresh air and you're not hurting anyone as long as you don't get too close to the tracks. I don't have a problem with rail buffs. In fact, I'm not even ashamed to say that I think I might be coming one of their ranks. So if you're watching this and you're a rail buff, well, you should welcome me to the club because I've been hanging up, hanging around up here on the Cajon Pass for all afternoon now shooting videos and it's weirdly fascinating. I mean, I've always had a weird fascination with shipping, you know, cargo ships and trains and trucks and the way things are transported. I mean, if anybody watched the video I did at the world's biggest truck stop in Iowa on Interstate 80, well, then you might uh, understand a little bit or remember like what a goofball I am when it comes to <laughs> these various modes of transportation. I don't know, I like to buy my crap. I order a lot of stuff from Amazon. You know, I like to make my jokes about Bezos, but I'm one of Bezos's top customers probably. But I guess I just find it interesting uh, thinking about and observing the ways all this crap is moved. You know what I mean? Like I can go to Walmart, say, or well, before my anti-Walmart stance, uh, I could have gone to Walmart and bought a pair of flip-flops for 99 cents that were manufactured halfway across the world in China by some, let's just be real here, basically a slave. And then those flip-flops were loaded into a truck in China, which took them to a port in China or to a rail line in China, which took them then to a port. And then they were loaded into a shipping container and they were shipped all the way across the Pacific Ocean to Long Beach. And then they were unloaded onto a rail car or onto a truck and taken to the Walmart in Las Vegas, Nevada, where I was able to buy them for the absurdly low price of 99 cents. Now you tell me, how does that make sense? How can flip-flops be that cheap that were manufactured that far away and traveled by, well, essentially planes, trains, and automobiles? It doesn't make sense. But it's fascinating to think about and it's fascinating to watch these railroads bringing in all the goods. And to that end, apparently I'm not alone in my fascination. <laughs> well, I know I'm not alone with my fascination in train spotting anyway. Maybe I am. <laughs> Maybe I am alone in my weird fascination with the way goods are shipped. But I'm not alone in my fascination for train spotting. And I know that to be the case because up here 
in the mountains by the Cajon Pass, there's an entire park built just for that purpose. That's right, it's a little park called Hill 582. Which is not the most poetic name in the world, but I'm guessing it's called that because, well, we're on top of a hill in the middle of all these gorgeous snow-capped mountains, uh, sort of sandwiched between all these railroad tracks. So it's basically the perfect place to do a little train spotting. Matter of fact, here comes a train right now. Look at this, they even have these little benches here so you can sit and watch as the mighty BNSF Railroad approaches. This train is coming from Barstow or Vegas or who knows, it probably stops everywhere. And it's probably headed to Long Beach. There he goes. Doot, doot. Dang, look at all them shipping containers. And yep, there's an Amazon one. I mean, if you really stop for a minute and think about what is in every single one of these containers, I mean, I'm being mildly facetious when I talk about flip-flops, but I'll bet you anything, at least one of those containers, well, I was gonna say is full of flip-flops, but no, it isn't because this train is coming from the east to the port. And so, while well, we all know Americans don't, we don't export any flip-flops. We're too good for that. I mean, or at least our, we treat our workers better than that. We wouldn't be able to produce a 99 cent flip-flop here in America, uh, at least not legally. So, I don't know, these shipping containers, yeah, maybe there's minerals in them coming from some mine out in the desert, or maybe they're just empties, more realistically. They're probably just empties. Matter of fact, I just saw a Walmart one. That one's definitely an empty. Headed back to the port so it can be loaded onto a ship and sent over to China to fill her up with more crap. Bring more patriotic sunglasses, boys. That's right. These were made in China too. Anyway, you can see this wasn't like a super duper long train. I'd guess this one was only about, I don't know, 50, 60 cars long. Still pretty impressive when you consider how much power those, uh, Oh god, what do they call the cars in the front? <laughs> oh my god, I'm a terrible train spotter. I'm new to this. Engines, I guess, the engine cars in the front. I think this one had three, if I recall correctly. Uh, and I think those engine cars are the only thing responsible for breaking this whole mess. Now remember, this thing is still has quite a ways to go. This train has to go around that curve and then down through here, down into the LA Basin. It's got to descend another... I think the Cajon Pass is at 3,000 feet. It's got to go down at least another 3,000 feet. And all them cars, empty or no, are heavy. And so the, it's all up to those three engine cars at the front to do all the braking for that. Isn't that amazing? Okay, well, while I'm up here at this park and nobody else is here, let's take a look around. Honestly, I can't believe nobody else is up here because it's such a beautiful day, but that is a super duper duper steep road. You can't see it from here, but I mean, it was like one of the steepest roads I ever drove up and <laughs> it was gnarly. So that probably keeps most people aside from you know your weekend off-roaders from coming up here so i should be okay but that being said let me shoot this video before somebody else shows up and then i get all tongue-tied and embarrassed anyway so these rail buffs built this little park on top of this hill so you could sit and watch the trains go by and they've landscaped it beautifully i mean look at this these are all native cactus plants to this region. Matter of fact, I was reading about this online. I guess the first rail buffs that built this, I'm guessing this was just like kind of like a unofficial spot that rail buffs would come hang out. They knew this was a good hill and you know, they'd been coming here so long that one guy put up a bench and then another guy brought another bench and then they thought, well, we better put up a trash can and well, why don't we plant some shade trees? So they planted these, I don't know if those are pepper trees. They planted some kind of tree that it, is technically non-native to this area. And so I think this land we're on might be managed by the Forest Service. So then the Forest Service sent their biologists out here and guys, these trees aren't native. We're gonna have to tear them out. And so I think if I remember correctly, they tore out some of the trees, but they were actually cool. Um, the biologists were cool and they talked to the rail buffs and they arrived at an agreement. How about that? So rare in this day and age. They allowed them to keep some of the trees and then some of the other trees had to be replaced with native trees. I'm not exactly sure what happened. Anyway, enough about the plants. Let's look at the train stuff. Okay, I don't know what the name Hill 582 means. Maybe there'll be some information here that will tell us. And if there isn't, I'm sure someone will let me know in the comments below. Okay, so that's obviously an old sign that was next to a railroad track. You can see how weathered and cracked it is. And it's sort of set into this really cool frontispiece at the entrance to the park. Look in between there though, like, that is an really old, looks like piece of concrete. And like it said, 
813, 313, something like that. I have no idea what that would have been. And then over on this side, there's kind of like a little memorial. It says, remembering the historic 1913 Al Ray Tunnels. I don't know what the Al Ray Tunnels were, but maybe that did say 1913. Maybe that's part of the Al Ray Tunnels, whatever they were. Oh yeah, look, the original 582A signal mast at the northeast corner of Hill 582. Oh, that, that's the original 582A signal mast that I guess used to be at the northeast corner of this hill. So I guess this thing was put up to remember this guy, a dear friend, mentor, and fellow rail fan named Chard L. Walker. Oh, okay, I've been calling him Rail Buffs. I guess it's Rail Fan, all one word. Sorry, guys. Rail Fan. Chard Walker. Sounds like he was a cool guy. He lived all the way from 1922 to 2007. Nice long life. Probably all the fresh air and exercise he got hiking around to look at trains. Well, apparently he was pretty well known because it says he was known for his authoritative Cajon Pass book and photographs. He was a historian and a true gentleman. Uh, I guess they meant gentleman. A loyal employee of the Santa Fe Railroad for 36 years. He retired in 83, lived and worked at Summit from 1951 until the Summit Depot closed in 1967. Okay, I'm guessing Summit must have been the name of a little outpost up here at the actual Summit. Like Cajon Pass, when you go, if you drive over Cajon Pass and there's like a gas station and stuff, that's lower down. That's not at the summit. That's like at Cajon Junction. So Cajon Summit, which I'm guessing would be up there somewhere where all them trucks are going by. Well, that must have been some kind of little settlement where this dude lived and worked from 51 to 67, so 16 years. Anyway, then it goes on to say that this plaque was placed here by Friends of Chard in June of 2008. We're very grateful to the BNSF and the Ames Construction Company for providing the 582A number plate from the original signal mast and the historic concrete remnant from the west portal of All Ray Tunnel Number 1. So I was right. That did say 1913, and that is part of this mysterious All Ray Tunnel, whatever that was. I mean, I'm guessing it must have been a tunnel going through... Well, kind of like those Chinese railroad tunnels I was talking about a little minute ago. Okay, anyway, let's see what else is going on in this little park. I mean, it's really nicely landscaped. Somebody spent a lot of money at Home Depot buying these beautiful bushes, and somebody obviously comes up here and takes care of everything, you know, weeds and and uh, trims off the dead stuff, because it's real nice. Look, somebody even put a pinwheel here. These rail fans are caring for this place impeccably there's no litter because there's a trash can here that presumably somebody comes up and empties the trash every now and then oh look here's some more memorials i'm guessing if you're a rail fan and you pass away your loved ones probably know where you want to spend all of eternity so i wouldn't be surprised if there's some ashes scattered up here too i mean well this one here is in memory of roy susan well roy o susan and roy e gaunts Oh, it says the Gaunts family, Roy, Susan, and their two kids, Roy and Becky, chose this hill as their favorite camping site and train viewing spot many years prior to the hill becoming Hill 582. Oh, how about that? And then it says Roy O, Roy Sr., planted the first eucalyptus tree in 1994, which is now the tallest tree. And then he also donated another eucalyptus tree in 1994. And then in 1998, Sue's tree was planted. Gosh, I hope they didn't tear down those trees as part of this native plant nonsense huh anyway then there's another plaque here in memory of dave burton and ed delvers avid rail fans writers and photographers dave and ed were close friends and publishers of the annual tehachapi calendar oh yeah tehachapi if you've ever driven over the tehachapi pass that's a humdinger the railroad that goes up of that i guess it's so steep it has to go in a loop i actually made a video about that too a few years ago you can check that out uh, it's pretty interesting. Anyway, I guess these guys, Dave and Ed, published an annual Tehachapi calendar. It's like a sexy pinup calendar of trains. Dave was also known as Train Junkie to rail fans across the world. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, who's this? William B. Garner. Bill Garner's vision, dedication, and perseverance is largely responsible for the AT and SF, which remember is Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe, steam locomotive 3751 being restored and operational. Okay, well, I don't know where it's restored and where we could see it, but that's cool. Let's see, Michael B. Jeroman, he was also a rail fan. Guess he had a big black dog and they would come up here and, oh, they spent a lot of time developing this hill. Oh, good for, oh, and he served in the Air Force and the Coast Guard, right on. And then finally, one last guy, Michael John Marslow. He was a BNSF diesel engine mechanic. Oh, he was young. He, he lived from 1962 to 2003, so he was only 40 when he died. I wonder what happened. It says the draw bar was placed on this hill by him and his friends in the year 2000. So I guess this is a draw bar. 
and he put this up here. So I guess he was a rail fan as well as a diesel engine mechanic. He worked for the Burlington Northern Santa Fe. Isn't that what BNSF stands for? Oh gosh, I'm a terrible rail fan, but I'm learning. Anyway, under the memorials, there's also a little thing somebody made out of. Oh, those are, I was gonna say out of rocks, but no, those are railroad spikes. Look at that, bunch of railroad spikes driven into a, a big old slab of cement and it says Hill 582, that's cool. And then up here, well, it says the Brotherhood of Railway Carmen. Oh, okay, I guess it's like a union. First I thought it was Carmen, like the name Carmen, like Carmen Miranda. I'm like, what? that doesn't make sense, but no, Railway Carmen. Friendship, unity, and true brotherly love, AFL-CIO. Ah, I wonder if they know where Jimmy Hoffa is. Oh, then we got a sticker from the Dirty Cooler crew. I feel like I just saw one of their stickers in a video I made not that long ago. I don't remember where. And then look here, there's Remember Rob Limone. Born in August 76, died in 2014. Wow, he was very young when he died. <laughs> I was also born in 1976. Wow, I wonder what happened to him. Uh, I guess he was a rail fan or maybe he met his untimely demise as a result of a road. Actually, <laughs> well, that's kind of a grisly thing to mention, but my own dad made his demise at the hands of a train. Uh, by choice, he committed suicide by stepping in front of a uh, train up in the Bay Area. I mean, it, it's a terrible thing. And I mean, ugh, what a way to kill yourself. But that's the way he did it, man. And I actually do kind of want to go up there and make a video at the site where it happened. Because I don't know, it's personally meaningful to me. And I'd like to remember my dad. Anyway, I don't mean to bring a downer vibe to this whole situation. Behind these memorials, we have some Bits and bobs, I guess if you're a rail fan, you'll know what this stuff is. That looks like a cross section of railroad tie with a nail plate on it, and I'm not sure what that, why that's there. This is, oh my God, here I'm gonna go make everybody laugh. Part of a coupler or something that uh, train cars attach together by, I don't know. And then there's this other thing next to it that's like, oh gosh, some kind of giant metal piece of hardware that's probably used to connect rail cars or wheels or oh maybe that's like maybe that's the middle of a, a wheel on a railroad car i don't know oh look behind it there's a sign you can hardly see it notice oh gosh let me see dump no rubbish okay so it's basically just an old no littering sign well no problem about littering here there's a trash can but there is apparently a problem with poisonous snakes. Look at that sign. Poisonous snakes and insects inhabit the area. Yikes, this is rattlesnake country. Look how cute though, next to it, there's a bird feeder and there's tons of little birds. I don't wanna to go too close, I'll scare them. I'll just zoom in. Look, tons of little birds going nuts eating bird seed that somebody put in there for them. How nice is that? I love this Hill 582, man. Say what you will about rail fans, but they strike me as an exceptionally peaceful bunch of people. You know, they just want to come up here and watch trains go by, maybe take a few pictures, feed the birds. I'm all for it. What I am not all for are poisonous snakes and insects. I don't know what poisonous insects are around here, but golly. I guess it's good to be mindful of that. Uh, I feel like it's a little too chilly for snakes right now, but gosh, you never know. I'll have to be careful, especially because I'm wearing flip-flops. Okay, beneath the uh, poisonous snake warning sign, there's also a certificate for Werner Mir, train master American railroad fans in Switzerland. Wow, how about that? Do I have any Swiss fans watching? Apparently there's a bunch of hardcore rail fans in Switzerland and I guess they got together with the guys who did this hill and came up with this thing in uh, kind of like a brotherly solidarity thing. Rail fans of the world, unite! And then underneath that, there's this Five gallon bucket with a rock on the lid. What do you suppose could be in here? Oh, that's where they keep the bird seed. Aww. Man, that is the cutest thing I've ever seen. Well, I'm gonna close it back up and put the rock back on top of it because it looks to me like the birds have plenty of seed right now. Somebody must have just been here because there's tons of seed in there. Um, so I'll leave that for the next person. But yeah, aside from that, it's basically just a really nice viewing platform. You can see they even built a little deck stretching out. Oh, I guess this would be the east or north side of the hill. Uh, covered in all that prickly cactus, but yeah, there's a bench there. There's a bench there. I think there's benches over on the other side of the hill too. Let's go over here. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful out here. I mean, golly, what a place to sit and watch trains. I could be up here all day and I'm not kidding. And there's like a little deck here. 
I guess not a bench, but a deck. And then there's a, oh, there's a trail that leads out to like a point. We'll go check that out in a minute. Um, yeah, just kind of like a little, I mean, I guess you could sit there. Nice sunny place to hang out in the sunshine and wait for trains to go by. This is awesome. Okay, let's go down this trail to the end real quick and see what's on the point. Gotta be super careful walking past all this prickly cactus. Okay, this just kind of goes down to the end of the hill where there's like a flat spot. Oh my God, if you were a rail buff, this would be the perfect place to set up a tent and camp out overnight. You know, you're basically right here overlooking the railroad tracks. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it might not be the most peaceful night's sleep you ever got because, you know, 75 to 100 trains per day come over this thing at all hours in the morning. But if you're a rail fan, I don't think it would bother you at all. In fact, this is probably like every rail fan's dream place to camp. And gosh, if you're a rail fan watching this video from Europe or someplace, you're probably dying like wanting to come check this out. So it's my hearty recommendation that you do so. If you happen to be coming to Vegas or coming to Los Angeles, come check this place out. Now you might not be able to drive your rental car up this hill, but you can hike up and <sighs> you tell me it's well worth it. Anyway, uh, there's one other thing I want to look at before I leave this Hill 582. There's an ammo can over here and it probably has a notebook in it where you can write your name and let people know you were here. So let's see when the last people were here. Oh, look how nice and neat it is. You know, some of these ammo cans are full of crap and granola bars. This is very tidy, just two little notebooks. I'm actually gonna take them uh, over here into the sun. Right here overlooking the point. So that way while I'm sitting here, if another train comes by, we won't miss it. Uh, hard to imagine missing it <laughs> either way because it makes so much dang noise. Okay, these notebooks are actually super cool. This one here is full and I'll look at that in a minute, but this one here is brand new. It was just placed here and look what it says on the inside. I really like this. Hill 582, leave a note. Please date, entry, city, state, country, rail fan or off-roader, first time visitor. Please do not skip pages. Make use of trash can not over the side thank you oh gosh this was just placed today or wait actually yesterday somebody came up here just yesterday and put this brand new notebook lucky for me because this other notebook is chock full oh here's somebody who posted on tiktok and youtube somebody from youtube crystal delapper i can't read her name delapause oh crystal delapause to whoever is reading this i just want to say i'm proud of how far you've come and if you're dealing with stuff and you feel alone then keep going because you can keep pushing you can't give up no matter how hard things get you got this you are loved by many people and i wish you the best crystal ah love that almost as much as i love the fact that another train is coming okay this one's gonna be a big one because look how many engine cars one two three four five engine cars i'll bet you anything that this is going to be a longer train than the one that we saw earlier. I mean, well, I don't know. You can see it clear to the end back there. And it is long, but is it really that much longer than the first one we saw? And that one I feel like only had three engines. I don't know how they determined that. I guess, I think it's all very carefully calibrated by weight and everything. So even though this isn't like the longest train in the world, it's like double as heavy because a lot of these are double stacked. That is wild. It also seems like it would be really hard to be a hobo nowadays, you know, like, those, in the old days, like Kenny Rogers, the gambler, you jump on a train, you get in the boxcar and you ride where it takes you, you drink some whiskey, the guy gives you some advice, tells you when to hold them and when to fold them, when to walk away, when to run. Well, how are you gonna do that when all these trains are double stacked as high as can be? I mean, there's not really anywhere you could climb up and hang out even if you wanted to, let alone a nice, cozy, empty boxcar to cuddle up in. Just another way things aren't as fun anymore. Okay, anyway, back to this notebook. Got distracted by that passing train. Oh, look at this. Never again. This beep was scary. I believe it. That hill was really scary to drive up. I'm not kidding when I said it was steep. Oh, um, anyway, I don't know. I'm not going to sit here and read this whole book. There's people sitting up here enjoying it. It's cool. It's beautiful. It's filled up all the way into the very last page. Oh, look, this guy came up in a VW Westie. Love those VW Westies. Right on, brother. Look at a picture of him. Uh, there's no room for me to sign this book. Let's see who the, oh, there's the Dirty Cooler crew. They were just here. Oh, just over a week ago. Uh, yeah, every page is taken. So let me go and sign my name in the new book. Uh oh, here comes another train. Uh -oh. 
Those look like the kind of cars that a hobo might be able to sneak into. Those look more like box cars, right? Or I don't know, are those the kind of cars where like livestock would go inside? Uh, I don't know. And I don't have time to sit here all dang afternoon puzzling about it because it's already after four o'clock. I didn't realize it's so late. Uh, and believe it or not, there's one other place I wanted to go to that's kind of connected to this site. Okay, anyway, I just wrote, Wander Hussey from Death Valley, USA, first time visitor, new rail fan, long time off-roader, drove up that gnarly hill, and a Toyota 4Runner, yikes! Anyway, love this peaceful little spot. You guys do great work. Appreciate the trash can and the fact that someone actually empties it. Thank you. Filmed a video for my YouTube channel. Check it out, Wonder Hussey Adventures. I am now a rail fan. That pretty much says it all. So now I guess I'm ready to head on out of here down that steep, freaky hill and go check out the other place I wanted to look at that kind of has to do with this site. Okay, as we watch the tail end of this railroad disappear around the bend, keep in mind that all those rail cars, whether loaded or empty, have to go down this steep 3% grade. And I guess, like I said earlier, it's all very carefully calibrated. The train cars are obviously weighed empty and then whatever they're loaded up with is also weighed. And then they do some kind of calculation and figure out how many engine cars are needed to pull it, you know, up over this pass. But then also how many engine cars are needed to brake uh, safely so they can make a safe descent into the LA basin because going down a 3% grade in a train apparently is very difficult. Put these notebooks back in the ammo box, close her up. Okay, um, like I was saying, watching that train go down that 3% grade, and this isn't even a steep part, this is a flat area. I can imagine it would be pretty scary, but for the most part, things go <laughs> pretty well. But every once in a while, something goes wrong and it can have terrible, consequences. And back in 1989, on May 12th, 1989, to be precise, there was a terrible accident. Join me next week as I tell you the story of the San Bernardino train disaster of 1989, in which an overloaded train's brakes failed, causing it to go barreling downhill at speeds of up to 100 miles an hour, where it derailed and smashed into a quiet blue-collar neighborhood, killing three people, including two children. And that wasn't even the worst of it.